Hi friends, I'm Lauren. And I'm Katie, and welcome to Okay, But Did You Know, a podcast where we talk about the TV and media that we love with a friend who's never seen it before. Today we're recapping and chatting about Once Upon a Time, episode 117, Hat Trick. This episode aired on March 25th, 2012. It was written by David H. Goodman and Vladimir Svetko, and was directed by Ralph Hemmaker. Now, before we get into our chaotic recapping and chatting, uh, let's go into a synopsis for this episode. In the Enchanted Forest, Regina has lost something precious to her, and she needs the help of Jefferson and his magic hat to get it back. He doesn't want to leave his daughter, but ultimately decides that if he can do this one job, he can set her up to have a better life. Traveling with Regina to Wonderland, they fight their way through the Queen of Hearts' hedge maze, where Regina retrieves her prize, her father. Unfortunately, since two people came through the hat, only two can go back, and now Jefferson is left stranded in Wonderland, trying to get the new hat to work. And in Storybrooke, now that Emma has discovered Mary Margaret has escaped, she'll stop at nothing to bring her back so that she can try to help her through the case. While searching, she almost runs into someone walking along the road. After a mishap with some laced tea back at his place, Emma finds Mary Margaret tied up in one of the rooms of the mansion. Jefferson is convinced that Emma is the key to getting his hat to work, and sending him home with his daughter. When she refuses, she and Mary Margaret fight their captor, and get Mary Margaret back to the station in time for her arraignment. So, I feel the need to start this because I did tell Katie that I looked forward to her yelling at me about a few things in this episode. One of which is, I think, the guest star of this episode, who is the man who needs no introduction, I think. He does not need an introduction. Because, like, when we have guest stars, as we've seen in the past couple episodes, I tend to go through, like, a little bit of their IMDb, a little bit about their casting and all the other stuff. But, like, the guest star for this episode, the man playing Jefferson, the Mad Hatter, is Sebastian Stan. It's, Seba- it's Sebastian fucking Stan. Um, yeah. I love him. If if anyone listening does not know who this man, um, where is the rock you've been living under and can I join you? Um, <laughs> he would best be known as Bucky Barnes. The Winter Soldier from the MCU. I'm not saying I want to live under the rock of where Sebastian Stan, where no one knows who he is. I'm saying I want to live Mm -hmm. under the rock where we don't know things about the outside world. I want to be clear about that because Katie was laughing at me. (laughs) Yeah, because I'm like, how would you not want to be in the same world as Sebastian Stan? I don't want to live in a world where he doesn't exist. I want to live in a world where I can be blind to so many things. No, I have to be. I'm I'm with you on that one. It, the world is burning. Um. <laughs> but, a, but fun fact, though, I, I believe, I believe, I'm not certain about the timing of this, but I'm like 80% certain at the time of filming this episode, mm-hmm. uh, Sebastian Stan and Jennifer Morrison were dating. What? They did not date for very long, but as far as I, I think that's in the window. Oh, that's hilarious. If it's not in the window, at some point, the two of them were dating. I'm just saying, getting to say that you dated Bucky Barnes is enough. But I did. I, I started texting Lauren as soon as the episode started. And all, like, what was it? I need to pull up the screenshot of this text because I took a screenshot of it because it was too funny. The text conversation that uh, that we had when you were watching Hat Trick because you had yeah. just you had just finished editing last week's Bob's episode. Then you said you're going to jump right into Hat Trick. So like I, I texted you like you started Hat Trick, <laughs> didn't you? And you, you knew I said Notion read you out. And then you said you would have known when something interesting enough happened because Katie does text me sometimes. And then my response was, which will take less than 10 minutes, I can assure you. And then you said, oh, I like this challenge. And then I said, I love the episode where I love the episodes where you yell at me. It's fun for me within 30 seconds in all caps is that sebastian fucking stan (laughs) it was so fast because i was like i was asking you like if you could figure out when that like what was it that you thought it would be and immediately it was him him. it was just sebastian (laughs) it was it was just sebastian stan it was just Sebastian Stan, because you know how much I love him. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was texting you, what, last night about, like, I think I should watch Fresh. It's comforting, apparently. Um, we've we've established we have problems. But, uh, like, in my notes, though, I really did, like, when I, of course, the first note in my notes is, all caps, is that Sebastian fucking Stan. And it is, in fact, him. Yes, um, it is him. And then I just wrote, well, hello, evil queen. This is a, this is a great costume out like episode for the Evil Queen. They're all so good. Because uh, then I wrote, "I'm too bi for this scene." Mm, that's fair. These two amazingly attractive people 
in the same room doing and talking the way that way they were. I was mm-hmm. literally sitting here, like, mouth agape. Just. There's a history there. Uh, uh, what? Between the characters, not the actors. Um, oh, damn. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, it's still happy about that, too. Yeah. But so, <laughs> this is my notes. <laughs> There's so many things that I took that I literally stro- like did, like, a strike through so that I don't say them now. This episode foreshadows so much. Well, now I'm going to rewatch it again because I have to. I mean, why not? Um, And you'll like this note. I just wrote, does Lauren have this map? I also wrote down a thing about the map. I forgot that his amateur cartographer thing. So there is a map in existence, but they never show it enough. Yeah. So I looked, I I even checked the wiki and I just, I couldn't find the map and the screen, the website that I use for the screen caps that we put in our, um, our Instagram posts. Mm -hmm. They don't do like every frame obviously because that would be like thousands upon thousands of images so they do their best but none of them had a solid look at this map but the map was also mostly from what i could tell mostly that main road Mm -hmm. and forest so i don't know if it would have given me what i want out of a storybook map but i still would if anyone has a better screenshot of it or they found an image of it feel free to dm us on instagram (laughs) please um i also wrote Oh no, Sebastian Stan has to stop drugging women. Because in multiple things now, because also in the movie Fresh, because I also wrote, was this was this scene the inspiration for Fresh? Because his character in that as well drugs women and kidnaps them. So I'm just like, dude, you're not having a good good run with this. He plays a psychopath really well. Really, really well. Um and then, of course, I had to put, this is my kind of episode. <laughs> it's Sebastian Stan. It's got Alice in Wonderland. So, it, well, well, the Mad Hatter, you know, we had, mm-hmm. this is our first foray into Wonderland. There will be more. And I'm saying this now because you did ask me. Um, there is, for those who have seen Once Upon a Time, know that uh, in 2013, 2014, there was the spinoff Once Upon a Time in Wonderland. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how many episodes that one ran. I did not personally watch it. I will be honest. I watched one episode uh, and then decided it wasn't for me, which I think is perfectly reasonable. Um, It came out when I was a freshman in college, so I really didn't have a lot of time to watch TV all the time. But also it just it felt like it was missing something. My thing with the spinoff, and this is not a diss on anyone that likes it, because if you like it, that's fine. And I do want to watch it eventually. Uh, Maybe now. Uh, Well, here's the perfect timing. But one of us has to have seen it before. I mean, I maybe maybe. Maybe we we split the episodes down. One, it gets to... Well, actually, you're better at this research. I don't know where you find these things. <laughs> I, I mean, I do have a master's degree that basically is just... I, I am very good at research, so that's just kind of my brain. So you may still have to be the one to do the research on it, but it'd Maybe. be very interesting to experience that together. Maybe, yeah. But, like, I think... My thing with it is I think that they relied a little too heavily on the brand recognition of Once Upon a Time. That's my take with it. Um, and what I hear from a lot of people is that the stories don't end up being as satisfying as they could be. I think especially because the show mm. got canceled after one season. So I think they thought they had more time. Oh my. I hate when that happens. Yeah. It's just, it's an unfortunate thing. They do a little bit to kind of ease the transition once it stops. Because my understanding of it is that part of it falls in line with some air. Er- like there's, there's also flashbacks and current timeline stuff. So how that lines up with other stuff is contentious. I, I have friends that I can ask questions about that. I don't really know. But mm. as far as I'm aware, and according to IMDb, Sebastian Stan does not appear in Once Upon a Time in Wonderland. Oh, now I don't want to watch it. There are characters that I really like that show up in it, though. <laughs> One of I who just, you haven't met yet. He, I know. I haven't met plenty of people at this point. One person who shows up in Once Upon a Wonderland, you will meet very, very soon. And I'm telling you nothing else about that because no. Yeah. All I got to say, though, is we only have five more episodes of season one. We are very close to the end, yeah. And then I will feel accomplished in something. We have five episodes left of season one, but only four episodes for this podcast. Because if you've been listening and you've heard us before, we're doing a finale special. So you'll have an extra long one that will be both 121 and Apple Red is Blood and 122, The Land Without Magic. And and even though this won't be out until 2024, uh, yeah. I get the joy of at least finishing all of this before 2024. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't it'll have be- to wait. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be our last episode that we record before we take our holiday break. So, 
Which works out because it's again, it felt it felt mean to make you stop at one twenty one and then wait two weeks. I would tell you no at this point too, since I have other things going on that mm-hmm. I, I need something. I, I nope, it has to we're happen. Look, we're looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. So, um, him being himself also was very interesting. Yeah, that's something that I put in our notes because it, the the fact that he I put this in our uh, script the the reason that he knows again is never fully explained. However, mm-hmm. this is something that I am not a big fan of on this show that they've done, and I've, I've put it in our script is we need to have a chat about how the curse affects people with mental illness. Ooh, because the people there's this this is one case, and then actually the second time they do Alice in Wonderland on the main show in season seven. Um, the girl who plays Alice, there's something going on where the curse is sometimes seeping through and uh, where a curse is seeping mm. through and things like that. So it's not a great tactic because they don't gotcha. fully explain, they don't fully explain if Regina kept him awake or if this is just the, a factor that the curse somehow did not fully affect him. Well, I'm also confused too, because if, okay, the way they were talking about how you've got different places within other places, if he was mm-hmm. in Wonderland, Yes. How is he in Storybrooke? Regina chose who she wanted to bring with her. Oh my god. Basically, if there was someone not in the Enchanted Forest, she could choose to bring them. That's what we're going with. Because I believe at one, I think there's an, there's a literally a line from, I think it's 205, where Regina says, I brought who I wanted. So I do think that's literally, like, she, if they're not in the Enchanted Forest, she she could have pick and choose who, uh, who comes with That's who powerful. With yeah. The curse is very malleable, which is really cool. Wow. <laughs> I did write that the caterpillar is always creepy. In every single reiteration I have seen of Alice in Wonderland, the caterpillar is always creepy. He is really creepy. Do you know who voices the caterpillar? Who? That would be Roger Daltrey, the lead singer of The Who. What? He's uncredited, but that's who it is. I repeat, what? Really? Really? They get some of the weirdest people, like, just for literally one-liners. They had him come on, they basically had this man come into a recording studio and go, who were you, probably 15 times, and then send him on his merry way for him to be uncredited. But it's so funny because of their song, to do that. Yeah, Jefferson, his so- his name is Jefferson after Jefferson Airplane. Because of their White Rabbit song. Oh my god. Like, it, there's... The writers very clearly have an affinity for a certain era of music. Let's be real here, because we've got Zoso, we've got Jefferson, and we have the lead singer of The Who. Okay. Um, all right. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I don't Moving know on. how to feel about any of this. Moving on. <laughs> so when he has Emma sit down and is like, make the hat. Of course, in my brain, I'm like, how? But then also I just went, ma'am, it's a whole table of weapons. And she chooses the telescope. <laughs> I don't know how I wrote Emma is at least smart earlier on in this set mm-hmm. of notes because then it got to this point and I'm like, just the scissors are right there and they're huge. Yeah. I don't know. I need you to explain this wall of hearts or I say hearts, but like the wall containers mm-hmm. and it being her father, but like they look like the ones that Regina has. Well, it's the queen of hearts. I'm... But Regina has the... I'm confused. She might... I mean, maybe she's just emulating the Queen of Hearts. Did she steal it? No, she did not steal the Damn. idea. She did not steal the idea. Or she she didn't steal, like, the, the Wall of Hearts. The the Queen of Hearts was interesting. I was really mm-hmm. confused as the veil and the quiet and all that because everything I've seen when, when it comes to the Queen of Hearts and everything else, she's screaming off with this head. And so I'm like, why is she so... Why is she veiled? Why is she quiet? What is happening? What is this queen... I think the the fact that, yeah, that she's always depicted as being screaming and red in the face and all of that we see from the animated one. I think it's cool to kind of have that dichotomy of their version is very, very quiet, very soft spoken, very much in in herself. Um, there's so much I want to say about the Queen of Hearts that I cannot say. Many of them are written down that I, str- I put a strike through because to remind me to not say them. I will say this. The person sitting as the Queen of Hearts mm-hmm. is not the same voice we hear uh, whispered through the through the the horn. That's all I'm saying. They they got someone else to be the person, than the voice. That's all I'm saying. 
Why? I want to say there, there's so much in this episode about the Queen of Hearts, but it all none of it comes together until the episode aptly named Queen of Hearts, which is 209. Okay, that's not too far away. No. It is, well, for our purposes, my guess is probably end of March. I can I can live with that. End of March, beginning of April. So, yeah. Um, there's so much I want to say about the Queen of Hearts. There's so much, like I said, there's so much foreshadowing in this episode that I, I like I said, I, I, I stroke through things. Although I will, I will, there's one that I can say without spoiling to, without spoiling anything. Um, to my thing of, because uh, also this works out very nicely. The week that we're recording this, we released uh, the episode about uh, Snow Falls, where the fun fact was that the uh, pictures are all CGI and they're just green screen panels. Mm-hmm. One of the pictures we see is a direct screenshot of ep- of something in episode eighteen. I'm not telling you which one it is. I'm just leaving that there. I'll point it out next week. We're too busy tomorrow for me to be able to do anything. So I'm Friday so is about to very quickly turn into a turn and burn again because I need to watch this episode. I. This is another case of, I truthfully, th- this is not the one where I keep saying that I know you're going to scream at me, because there's something from season two where I know you're going to yell at me. But, and I've told, uh, I told Zachariah this, and he's like, oh, yeah, she's going to be mad about that. And I'm like, sorry. <laughs> but um, for how much I've been hyping up episode 18, I really can't wait for you to just yell at me about it. <laughs> I just want to watch it already. How I much know. more we got to go? So I can go back and watch. I know, right? We got to record this. We got to record Bob's. We got to have to get through Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I did have that moment near the end, though, when you've got Mr. Gold and Regina, and I just go, of course they're working together. Of course. We'll see a little bit more about this scheme at the beginning of the next episode. Uh, and then my last note is, is Emma starting to believe? A little bit. I do like how at the very end we see Emma kind of starting to, because we, we you know, because in the scene with Jefferson, you know, you almost kind of question the thing that she says, like, you know, that if what you're saying is true, then that woman in the other room is my mother. And I want to believe that more than anything. Mm-hmm. And then you see that she just used it as a tactic to lower his defenses so she could smack him. It makes you wonder for like a minute, does she start to believe? But then she calls Mary Margaret her family. Yeah. Oh, I wrote that down. I was like, I can't tell if Emma's starting to believe or if she's tricking him. And then two seconds later wrote, oh, there's my answer. Because yeah. she then hit him so yes, exactly okay, okay never mind got yes. that we're, we're on to the next thing <laughs> uh but it's it's a it's a great moment um at the very end because it's it's emma basically saying like i'm putting my faith in you put your faith in me so whether she's she whether she's trying starting to believe or she's just starting to open up and you know bring down her walls either way it's just a really beautiful moment mm-hmm. so this episode I've said a couple of my fun facts already, so I'll just kind of go through my notes and skip over the ones that I, I can't talk about because this, ep- this episode, like, this, is, again, is what I keep saying, you know, when you see the future, there's irony everywhere. This episode really, either there's so much foreshadowing or just, like, I now see the connections between this and the stuff that's connected to it from other things, like, or from other episodes that, like, are lead into it. I see so much of it now, and I'm like... I think this might be the most I've ever paid attention to this episode. Okay. Only because it's the one before 118. So, like, I tend to just kind of, like, get through it so that I can get to 118. How dare you skip over Sebastian Stan like that? don't skip it. I want it. I just don't pay attention. Oh, you should pay attention to it. There are episodes... (laughs) There are episodes that, like, I've I've written down in past rewatches where I'm like, yeah, I could fully skip this episode and not miss anything. (laughs) This is not one of them. No, apparently not. And I'm just sitting here. Like, when I finally make these connections, you're just fully prepared for me to have words. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. Just know I love you. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Again, my notes are mostly just my unhinged inner monologue thoughts, which sometimes are funny and sometimes aren't. Um, Because my first note is, now we see Ginny running like she's trying to get her whole body off the ground. Oh, no. Like... That was a full body shot of Jennifer Gobin running. Her arms were very high and she was very much trying to, like, not trip on things, which we appreciate. 
and then I said, I have to bring in the geography of Storybrooke again with, with that when the telescope thing comes into view. Because... Yeah, what was that? He is so far from town. That is not a powerful enough telescope that it could see directly into the sheriff's station. But it did. Because that's because the writers say so. But like, geography not, not makes sense. Telescope science doesn't make sense. But my first highlighted, my first highlighted note, I should say, is Regina's, or my first highlighted line, I should say, is Regina's, so now you're foraging for fungus. Foraging for fungus. Because he was um, playing, like, the like the hide-and-seek game with, uh, well, what is her name, with Grace is her name in, uh, mm-hmm. in the Enchanted Forest because she was finding truffles or something like that. I like truffles. I just got a new truffle. Well, I got a I got a truffle infused cheese for my mac and cheese tomorrow. Very nice. That sounds delicious. But that that their dynamic is so interesting. We'd never meet Grace's mother. I will say we, every time we see Jefferson, it's just him. So we see him here in other flashbacks. We see the flashbacks. Sorry, the next flashbacks we see of him is bef- is well before any of this. So we never kind of get that interim. We don't know what happened there. It is what it is. But their dynamic is just so fascinating because the two of them play off each other really well. Really well. And as we've established, they're just very attractive next to each other, which I understand from uh-huh. an object from an objective point of view, I understand it. What is that meme that most bisexuals have where we're like crying and bisexual because you want both? Yeah. I mean it's it's like whenever I watch anything that's got um Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson. Mm, that's fair. Oh my god! Because between Marvel and the uh, oh god, what is it? Men in Black movies. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't exist to anybody watching those specifically, <laughs> just because the two of them are on screen. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Their dynamic is just a lot of fun to watch. Um, we will see other facets of it as time goes on. Something about their dynamic makes this episode for me at least a little more tragic than it should be because the way that regina got jefferson to help her with what she knew the outcome would be feels extremely personal when i have all when i have all the context oh no like she did she clearly did messed up yeah like like we talk about like the rules of the hat really quick because i also put that in our as a topic the rules of the hat um where the same number of people need to go through as who will come back because she very specifically says to him together so that they both jump through at the time so that the number is two. We'll mm-hmm. see that there is a little bit of a loophole when it comes to people going through the hat eventually. Okay. Because there is a way to get around a certain number of people going through and coming back. There, There is, in theory, a way that they could have brought Henry and Jefferson back. But mm-hmm. her intentionally leaving him there feels like giving him that hope that he could be home in time for tea with his daughter feels very personal and i can't talk about and why it, pretty much blaming it on him she pretty and blame, much told him well it's your fault basically i'm blaming it on him and like i want to talk about again i want to talk about it but this is like from 205 luckily it's it's soon at least it's soonish but it feels i'll come back to this <gasps> when we watch the episode titled the doctor <laughs> i can't wait um but uh, yes, yeah, so those are the rules of the hat is that two, only two can go through. Uh, oh, sorry. Only two can come back if two go through is the way that we go about this situation. Um, there's other rules. We'll see the hat implemented again in other ways. The the world building of the magic, as we always say with the show, is very wishy-washy, wibbly, wobbly, timely, wimey. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but, you know, it's magic. They change the rules when they want to. And I kind of just accept that at this point. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm okay with that. But this does bring in the world building aspect of the realms of story. Okay. Because what I keep saying is I keep calling it the Enchanted Forest. Now you keep jokingly calling it fantasy land, but I keep saying like technically fairy tale land is the realm or the enchanted uh, technically fairy tale land is the realm because within the, within fairy tale land, we have multiple kingdoms that include the Enchanted Forest as well as other kingdoms that I will not mention because they are spoilers. But as we can see, Wonderland is clearly its own realm. And then uh, I believe I wrote this down somewhere. Here we go. Um, So within the hats portal realm threshold situation, um, there are a bunch of different 
doors people could go through. Obviously, we have the mirror mm-hmm. that's meant to be Wonderland. The two that I could pinpoint, and the wiki was not helpful in finding the others because it only talked about the two that I could already see, mm-hmm. is the one directly to the right of the mirror uh, is meant to emulate uh, Wonka's glass elevator. So Willy Wonka. Interesting. It's a realm of story. Um, and then to directly to the left, there is a door that is very clearly green, uh, like green felt curtains with an emblem that says Oz. So you can go to Oz. Oz is its own realm of story. There is a bunch of there are a bunch of different realms of story that are all interconnected because they are realms of story. They're not the land without magic mm-hmm. because that's kind of its own things separate from everything else. But these are the uh, lands where the stories basically originated from. And then you, we will see as the show goes on how those stories came to our world as stories. I'm, I'm going to assume Neverland's just on the list just because of the way Neverland works. Yeah, Neverland's on the list. Yeah. I mean, just by, like, just knowing how, even yeah. in our own story of Peter Pan, the way Neverland works, that yeah. there's no reason changing that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's its own realm. It is not part of, like, the hat portal. You can't get to it that way. There are very specific mm-hmm. ways you can get to it. Yeah. I had but. a feeling that that was going to be one, though, because... Yeah. It's I, a classic. I haven't hidden from Katie that Captain Hook shows com- comes up at some point. I'm okay with this. He's a very he he's again he's a very attractive man. We love Captain Hook. At least I look. I I personally really like Captain Hook. I'll be honest. He drives me bonkers sometimes, but there's a deep abiding love for this man. I I am a sucker for a morally gray character, and I just have a feeling he's gonna be one of my next big morally gray crushes. And I keep telling Katie she needs to pick a a, uh, a main character. And if she does pick Captain Hook, she will be much happier than she's been. <laughs> Thank goodness, because Sebastian Stan doesn't stay around long enough. And Leroy's never around. Leroy, so. yeah. Leroy is is here and there. Um, Sebastian Stan, according to the IMDb, he's in seven episodes. But the last one that they credited him in, I think they must have cut him out of it. Because I don't remember him actually being in it. Hmm. So well, well, now you get to pay extra close attention to find out. Yeah, because like the last episode he's credited in is two eighteen, but I thought his last appearance was two oh five. We'll find out. Look, all I know is I get at least some of them. Mm-hmm. You do. I'm okay with that. There you go. I always write down this line, and people like to remind me whenever I say that I don't remember any of Jefferson's lines because this is quite literally the only one anyone ever remembers. You know what the issue is with this world? Everyone wants some magical solution to their problems, but everyone refuses to believe in magic. I love that line. Like, he's not wrong. I I would add on to this. Along the lines with that, does come like what I say about the show a lot, is that Once Upon a Time suggests to its viewers that these characters are as real as they feel to us. And with that, like, it's almost like, you know, we want to believe that these characters are real or that they know that they that they are as real as they feel to us. And the show is kind of like, they're right there. They could be right there. But everyone refuses mm-hmm. to, like, to, to see past things. Like, I'm not saying that fairy tale characters are real, but I do think that it does bring that idea to mind that these characters are as real as they feel to us through our favorite media and how we, how we keep yeah. them alive. Well, it makes me think of even if you go back to the original storyline of, like, let's go back to Peter Pan. Mm-hmm. And if I remember correctly, the original story is like it all was based on how much you believe. If you yeah. believe enough, it will be. Mm-hmm. Faith, and trust, and pixie That dust. makes me think. Exactly. That's what it makes me think of. When there's a smile in your heart, there's no better time to start. Sorry. Um, <laughs> never apologize. I'm never the biggest fan. I'm not the biggest fan of the animated Peter Pan. I think I've said before, the only adaptation of it that I like is Hook. And no, I have not watched the one you've told me to watch. <laughs> I have not watched it. But you need to now. As soon as, at least before we get to the first Peter Pan episode of this, I need you to watch it. So if I start talking about it, you know what the hell I'm talking about. Okay. I will. Okay. So this is my promise now. I will watch it before we get to the first episode of season three. <laughs> Damn. Captain Hook comes in before Peter Pan because they were able to get the rights to him faster than they were able to get the rights to Peter Pan as a franchise. I didn't know that the rights were different. Yeah, apparently, um, because I think Sony had I think Sony had a Peter Pan movie in production. Oh. Um, because Peter Pan, because think like Disney has the rights to their version of Peter Pan. They can't give yeah. the rights to Peter Pan away if the rights have been sold briefly to someone else. So I who I made think Hook? Hook was made by Sony. Okay, that makes sense now. That's why. But I did really like uh, 
the switch off of uh, off with his head not actually killing him because i think that's mm-hmm. kind of especially why not bend the rules a little bit like truthfully why not but given the fact that it was just the the guy holding his head all i could think of was sebastian and stan in a green morph suit with his head sticking out makes sense <laughs> that's yeah. probably what they did for that that's probably what they did mm-hmm. um but he's probably used to doing things like that <laughs> At this point, I mean, at this point, yeah, this was in 2012. At this point, I think he'd only done the first Captain America movie by then. So he hadn't done anything super so he crazy. Was, he was only Bucky Barnes at that point and yeah. not even um, his other character. He wasn't the Winter well. Soldier by then. Yeah, he wasn't Winter Soldier yet. So he hadn't done anything crazy. He hadn't needed to wear a green sleeve on his decapitated arm, you know. He didn't have the hair. A- amputated arm. De- decapitated arm. That's, that's, okay. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But no, he didn't have to wear the wig yet. No, no wig. I just started uh, putting this whole, just all of my stuff in the for the section in caps um, because I just, of the action scene that was them fighting in Mary Margaret in Mary Margaret's captive room of just yeet over Mary Margaret Ginny's poor stunt double. <laughs> yeah, like all of their poor stunt doubles. But also, I wrote down this note: Jen's shoulders when she hits him with the telescope. Though there's a there's a scene from an episode of season two that I've been using as a reference point because like, there's no other way to describe this as I guess this is content warning for fitness conversation real quick I'm not talking mm-hmm. about anything other than just fitness goals but I said like no like I can't explain my fitness goals other than this very specific screenshot of Jennifer Morrison handing someone her jacket because it shows <laughs> off the definition of her arm really well Hey, definition is, I like that goal. I like that the goal is like a definition oh, and yeah. not like a number or something. So like, I no. feel like that's okay. It's that kind of look. That's that's the goal one day when I get back into strength training. I was like, I can't describe the goal other than this one specific screenshot. I cannot wait to get back into strength training mm. so much. Yeah. I loved the reveal of the decapitation scar. Yes. It was so cool. When they're doing that and he just kind of holds his head back and the light hits it right and it's just, you can just see it. And it's just like, that's, yeah. it's it's in his psychopathy mode, but... That maniacal grin on his face through it. Well, even like the very beginning when he goes like, oh, I see you found Spot. I'm like, that that is psycho. I love it, but that's psycho. I loved it. That's my, nope, I love it. And then at the very end, we said uh, Emma's line of, have you been taking kickboxing and not telling me about it? Yes. I think I even had one line that was like, go marry Margaret. She was so good in this scene. Mm-hmm. I have two more notes and then we can do stats. And then I have one final fun fact that I was going to bring up earlier, but it felt better to make it our final reveal fun fact. Ooh. Fun stuff. Um, one being... I love that Jefferson took the time to not only move her car off of his driveway, but to cover it up to protect it from the rain. That's him being a very nice psychopathic kidnapper. I was about to say, like, he is smart. Psychopath does not mean unintelligent. But also, I mean, on moving it, moving it from the driveway is one thing, but, I mean, the driveway was covered. Mm-hmm. Didn't, it didn't need the rain protection. I don't, we're not, not saying we don't appreciate it, but it didn't need to be moved. I don't, I don't think he covered it to be nice. I suppose. He covered it this so is... nobody saw it. <laughs> I, again, I, but if he's so far away from town, who would have seen it? Well, with the, the, the telescope, who knows? Who... <laughs> we have no way of knowing how far away he is, but I, I, I could say my thing of like, well, we've never seen him before, so therefore that means he could be very far away from town. But that True. means nothing. That means nothing because, like, that's kind of like the the reason that the writers give any time a character kind of disappears and we never see them again. Like, oh, they're just in another part of town and not being part of adventures. And we're like, this isn't that small of a town. Or this isn't that big of a town. But okay. Well, it's like I, I'm laughing a little bit right now too because I'm like, this is how much, how deep I like to go into things. I'm just happy we're doing it now and not on a cartoon, technically. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Speaking of cartoons. What I will now be referring to Regina and Rumpel in their schemey scheminess. Um, I wrote oh. down, what could Pinky and the Brain be planning? Yes. Someone made a fan edit that I can't send you because it's got scenes from season three, but it's so funny. It's the two of them to the theme of Pinky and the Brain, and it's perfect. I cannot wait to get to that. Please make note of that to send to me as soon as I can see it. Yes. Because we, lo- we are a Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain household. I love Pinky and the Brain. I love, I love that whole that whole situation 
but the two of them are quite literally pinking the brain because every time you've got the two of them together, it pretty much is, gee, Brain, what are we going to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. So that's, uh, that that's, I will now be referring to them when they're scheming, they are just now Pinky and the brain. And effectively, Rumpel is the brain and Regina is Pinky. Yeah. I wanted to go the other way around because Pinky looks more like Rumpel, but. Nah. Doesn't work. No. The more you see of their dynamic, the more that him being the brain and her being Pinky makes sense. I'm excited to see it. She, she's not like a well-meaning, like, bumbling situation, but just he's pulling more strings than she is. Well, he can see the future. When you know the future, there's irony everywhere. God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, what did you score this episode out of curiosity? Uh, I gave plot an eight. Like, okay. it's a good plot. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of um alice in wonderland either not my Mm -hmm. favorite it's okay like it's fun Mm -hmm. i've never actually read like the classics or anything but they've never it's never been like one of my favorites mad hatter is my favorite character from it though so definitely points for plot for that because thank goodness it was mad hatter and not something else annoying uh because i i don't think i could have done much else with that Mm -hmm. characters 10 (laughs) for obvious reasons i expected that yeah uh, in personal, I gave it a nine, so mine's a twenty-seven. Okay, I also gave it a twenty-seven. Oh, it gets a ten for plot, a ten for character, and a seven for personal. <laughs> oh my goodness! Because I mean, the plot again. I think this got higher plot this time because I am now seeing again. I'm watching this section of the season of this of this season, and I should say we are now at the point where I have watched the episodes one at a time going forward. This was the last mm-hmm. episode I watched before I started watching them live. It's like, what a way to end before I had to wait a few days. Right? Um, but Man. this is the closest I think I've ever watched this episode. And there is so much connection to so many other episodes that I just couldn't deny that it's just, it's everything. It's all connected. It's all connected is what my brain came to basically. Um, and 10 for character. Cause I love Emma's arc through this basically is I really mm-hmm. enjoy a lot of that. It gets a seven for personal. I usually don't let what happens in other episodes bias me, but just Mm -hmm. Jefferson bothers me. I know it's about not Sebastian Stan. He does a phenomenal job. Same as I always say with Robert Carlyle and Rumpelstiltskin. Robert Carlyle does a phenomenal job. It's Rumpel. Mm -hmm. Jefferson, the things that he does... I, I, I'm we've holding established the I have problems. That's all I'm gonna say. We've established I have problems, <laughs> but th- this I th- we know this. But <laughs> like th- things that he's done, they're not even like the psychopathy of like because he's not the the other times we see him, the things that I'm thinking of, it's not a psychopathy situation. It's just him being a selfish asshole, basically. I'm just like, no, not doing it. Don't like that. So I get to twenty seven because it gets ten, ten, and seven, which is not uh, still the same score I gave the last episode, just for different just with different numbers yeah we we do that a lot yeah so as i said i had actually i lied i have two more fun facts that i didn't get to mention one okay. is just one is just kind of cute and the other one i think might might blow your mind a little bit <clears throat> so the cute one being um the girl who plays grace um her older sister actually ends up getting cast in the show in season seven which oh. i they they cast siblings in completely different roles, like completely different seasons. It's just it's just fine because like, they're pulling from Canadian actors, so my guess is that kind of tends to happen. But um, I'm not going to tell you who her sister plays. However, her sister does end up dating Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Okay, our sapphic couple is half Alice in Wonderland, half person who you cannot know exists. Well, shit. You don't know anything about her. you don't know anything about her character. You don't know anything about her. Her parent? No, nothing. So, telling you who it is wouldn't make any sense. Ah, uh, all right. I'll wait years. But sapphic, sapphic couple. Ad- That's all that matters. Adorable sapphic couple. That's all I need. There's a scene where they go on a on a date, and she takes her to go um get uh they they wait to see their first date. It's adorable. Uh, they takes her. They take they get candy apples, and uh, it just goes. Alice just goes. She's like, this is the most delicious thing I've ever eaten. I had no idea you could put candy on fruit. You could put candy on anything if you try hard enough. That's a worthy goal. I can't wait for this. They're adorable and I love them so much. 
My last fun fact before we leave us on this episode. Um, the old hag toy seller that we see. Yes. We see at the very end that it was Regina in disguise the whole time, right? Yeah. That's Lana in the makeup. What? They were going to hire an actor. I think they were going to have her do voiceover. Um, Because if you go back and watch it and you listen, that is very much her voice. Like, knowing it, you'll hear it. But she asked them, because she likes to do things with physicality. She likes to do a lot of stuff with character voice and other character movements. So she asked them, instead of hiring a stand-in or someone else or an extra to be in the, to do it physically, just have me do it. And that's what they did. It's Lana in the makeup. It's great makeup. It's great prosthetics. Because you really would have no idea if I hadn't told you. My whole life is a lie. But Lana gets to play a lot of fun characters through wow. the guise of Regina. So it's a, it's a good time for her. She has a lot of fun with this character. That's wild. She's so good. Well, I love it, though, because it kind of fits in with the story, the traditional story of Snow White. Mm-hmm. So I actually really, really love that. Wow. All right. Yeah, you're right. It blew my mind. Uh-huh. Well, that's why they had it being Regina in disguise anyway. But to have it be Lana is just is just an extra level of like, that's fun. That's fantastic. Thank you all for listening. Join us next time when we discuss Bob's Burgers Season 3, Episode 9, Bob Rest Ye Merry Gentle Mannequin, and Episode 10, Mother Daughter Laser Razor. Don't forget to like, rate, and follow the podcast wherever you listen so you can be notified every time we publish a new episode. And follow us at O-B-D-Y-K underscore pod on Instagram and TikTok. This has been an episode of OK, But Did You Know? A TV and media podcast. It was hosted by Lauren and Katie and edited by Lauren.